Hey everybody, Dow Jones Dave here with my uh, custom Dow Jones Dave's market report and my proprietary barometer. So let's take a look what we've got. By the way, this is, uh, I'm just getting started on this. I used to do this before, but um, in an attempt to get rid of questionable videos as far as monetization, I just deleted almost all, I just deleted all my videos. I uh, got disgusted with it, and starting all over. I left up a seminar by Gordon Hall that's interesting about your rights and public versus private and how we shouldn't try to resolve things without the government if we can. It's a pretty interesting seminar. You might enjoy it. And other than that, we're going to do stock market videos. So, with my peachy keen sources, we're looking at today's price and uh, the change from weekend July 20 or so, like week before last, um, is 54.93, which is pretty paltry. It was, of course, a lot higher than that. Um, P.E. ratio 24.87, which is really high for the Dow. The highest I've ever seen it is 28 during the Internet bubble, and it might have gone higher. I don't know. That was just an observation point. And I remember seeing it at 28. Uh, it was a long time ago, in case you're wondering how long I've been looking at the market. Okay, let's take a look at dividends. Dividends uh, current are $714.16 for the composite. Uh, last year was $662.48 with a current yield of 2.024%. Now let's take a look at earnings. Current is fourteen eighteen. A year ago is sixteen sixty four forty three. It's a drop of fourteen point eight percent. Now this report will be stacked weekly with the most recent figures on top, and uh, I've got some week week ago figures uh, and earnings. Look at earnings. Dividends didn't change. Nobody paid any dividends. But earnings went down from 1547 to 1418 in one week. So there's one reason the Dow might be going, ah, uh, tankola. Um, but there are better reasons for it anyway. So how is the Dow Industrial supporting a P.E. ratio of 25 when it's dropped earnings? I don't know, what's that, 1547 to 1418? 130, nearly 10%, around 8, 8, 9%, 8% probably, eyeballing it, uh, in a week. <laughs> That's like a whole year's worth of earnings declines in a week. And this is something you need to know when you're watching like reports, uh, especially on mainstream media, that what they'll do when this happens is they'll focus on estimates and companies beating or missing estimates, and they'll avoid talking about year ago results comparisons. So, I'd like you to watch whatever mainstream or whatever markets pundits you watch and see if they actually tell you that <laughs> last week was a really bad week for earnings on the Dow if you're looking for growth because growth was negative. All right, so earnings are down 14.8%, but notice these. Dividends are have are up 7.8% year over year. Do you think maybe that's what's driving the Dow? Possibly interest rates? And people don't realize, people, retail investors, people just piling on because of all the bullishness, don't realize that earnings are dropping? And that the market isn't trading on earnings, it's trading on dividends? Because big money's looking for income more than growth. And, I mean, you know, institutional investors, people with billions of dollars, they're not looking for the next zingy thing. They're looking for income. And income drives the market. Interest rates versus stock yields drive the market. And when, a long time ago, I did some of these. And ah. Uh, Sorry, I was checking the clock, see how much time I had. A uh, long time ago, I did some of these, and we saw the same thing. Um, and I don't remember what happened afterwards, but uh, at that time, 
my barometer was like, you know, in the 80s, 90s on an up cycle, so I didn't see any danger in the market. Unfortunately, I didn't keep tracking that, and since I hardly got any views, I didn't put it up. But I'm kind of uh, finding myself with extra time and nothing to do with it, and I'm really interested in the market, and it actually is a perfect time to do my report. This is my market barometer. All this stuff is just junk that I used to calculate something else. Um, wasn't supposed to be in the video, but you know, there it is. It'll be gone in my next one. And over here, you're going to have estimates, or probably estimates like right here, and then the barometer will be over here, and I'll have all this somewhere else. Actually, you won't need all this. I just did all this for the technical part of this video when we look at the chart. So the payout ratio right now is 50.35%. And that's as high as I've ever seen it. I've never seen it that high in my life. Not, And I've been watching that number a really long time. I mean, as, as long as I've been uh, watch, watching since 2000, 20 years or so, and I've never seen it that high. And although that doesn't go into the barometer, it should be considered as a confirmer of the barometer at this point. Now my barometer is at 107. Over 100 indicates a long-term sell. This is a long-term indicator. It's not a short-term indicator. In other words, this measures psych fundamental cycles between market lows and market highs on a long-term basis, and it's really accurate on the downside. This will be the first time I've ever actually tracked it over 100 so it's going to be interesting to see what happens but i can tell you what's going to happen the barometer is too high and a typhoon of falling stocks and rage uh, raging seas is, is coming how big is it going to be i don't know we're going to look at the technicals and the technicals are <laughs> technicals are almost hard to believe but you know we'll look through them anyway so that's my report, and all we have to talk about right now is the decline in earnings and the raise in dividends and the dividend stress put on the earnings by a 50.35% payout ratio when earnings are dropping. So this, to keep this dividend rate up, the payout ratio has to go up, you see, and less and less of earnings are available to reinvest, and this is a really bad situation. Although this alone generally won't tank the market as long as the dividends are attractive. So the barometer measures the attractiveness of Dow Industrial's dividends against other income vehicles, namely bonds. And I'm not going to tell you which bonds, but so you understand what we're measuring here. We're measuring income returns, stocks versus bonds. And right now the bonds have it. The barometer is at 107, and <clears throat> people are going to be fleeing the stop about Dow Jones Industrial for better returns. Now, what usually happens here is it cycles down. Uh, the barometer starts going down and down and down and down, and this will happen in all the major meltdowns. And eventually, it'll get to zero. And once it crosses the zero line or gets there, you know, it's going to fly for a year. So that's what we're looking at here. Now, let's go to the technicals. And I have some barometer readings there that you'll like. Right now, the barometer reading is 107. Notice the stocks went down, but the barometer went up. Monday, it crossed 100 and went to 101. Yesterday, it was 103. And today, it's 107. So the fact that stocks are falling isn't moving the barometer at all. That's pretty fucking bearish, too. Now, down here at the pandemic, the barometer was at minus 30. I'd never seen it that low. Typically, every time I've seen it, and I always check it when the market reverses, um, it cro go crosses below zero for like a few minutes to a couple of hours intraday, and then it's off to the races for a year. And uh, But this was the pandemic sell-off. I didn't calculate it for this one because going back and calculating this, getting the historical 
numbers I need to do it. It really takes a long time, but I did it. And um, I think it was minus 30. But it probably crossed zero, like somewhere around here. So you would have felt a little pain, but then you would have been off to the races for, what, a few years? A couple of years? At least one. I didn't calculate it here because, like I said, it got tired. And this minus 30 bugs me because I've never seen it before. So all I, you know, I've never seen it go below zero so far, ever, before the market reversed. And that's kind of like, whoa. So do I have to expand the parameters of the uh, barometer? Or is it simply that was excessive because of the pandemic? I'm going to chalk it up to the pandemic for that. Uh, at some other time, we'll calculate this and I'll show it. Um, so, technically, we can look for a fallback down to this, this support line. It broke out of the box, broke out of the box, and we've got to get a retest. That'd be a hell of a retest. That's at, uh, what is that? Like 34,190? Nope. Ah, lower than that. 34,21 to... 30, so, you know, 1,100 points to the downside. And that's what I see here. Um, whether that's going to help the barometer or not, I don't know. But once it starts moving down after it gets over 107 or 100, it generally indicates the beginning of a cycle down to minus zero, less than zero or zero. And what you could say is this measures risk. So right now, the risk... Risk factor is 107% that you're going to be underwater if you buy long term now for an indeterminate period of time before you go up. And significantly so. So here you would say, wow, there's negative 30% risk that I'm going to be significantly underwater before I make a bunch of money. So that's what this barometer does. And uh, like I said, this is the first time I ever tracked the top. So let's see what happens. Uh, and I'll do uh, another report at the end of the week tracking the same thing. We'll have earnings estimates. And um, maybe not for the previous week, but it, we'll get them started. And then they'll have estimate streaming so you can see the estimate trends and all that. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I'll be presenting some valuable information. So you want to see next week's report, sub up. And this is Dow Jones Dave checking out.